If you own the RC600 or the 505 Mark II, you'll definitely want to stick around for this one. This is the RC Editor, and it's had quite a few updates since the last time we looked over it, so let's get stuck in. Hello again everybody and welcome to the channel. Now before we get started, I frequently post videos like this, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop. And if you haven't already checked out my first video on the RC Editor, click up in the top corner to check that out. But as mentioned, a few features have now been added. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how you can save 10% on the current price of the editor. And if you're not familiar with this application, it's a third party app and has no affiliation with Boss whatsoever. There are many fellow RC600 and 505 Mark II users that frequently use it, appreciate the functionality and additional features it provides, and also the fact that John Moose Taylor, the creator of the editor, is regularly available to take on requests for additional features, as well as deal with any queries you may have. So let's take a look at the editor and see what's new. Now, when you first open up the editor, you will see some additional buttons that we didn't have before, but I'll run through them all anyway. Next to the connection status box, which is here, we have four options. The first one represented by this bolt of lightning is to connect to the current location. So that's the location that's currently selected within the connection status tab here. Next to that, we've got a select from history of previous locations button to save you having to rummage around through your folders. So you can see a list of locations that you've previously connected to. The blue folder is a browse for a specific folder if it's the first time that you're connecting to a location perhaps. So you will just navigate to the folder of your choice using the blue button. And then finally, we've got this orange button here, which is to restore the currently selected folder from a backup that you might have previously created. Now in the bottom left hand corner, we now have the option to connect and disconnect directly, provided you are physically connected to the unit. And there is also a handy about button to click on, which will take you to a page displaying useful content, access to other areas of interest, as well as letting you know which version of the editor you are currently running. Now, John regularly posts updates on the Facebook groups as to when new updates are available. There's also a handy button in the bottom right hand corner here to allow you to check if other updates are currently available. Now, if I go back to the home screen from here, you'll see there's a list of tabs at the bottom. None of these tabs actually show us any information just yet because we're not actually connected to a folder location. But you can do a few things in the settings area, such as change the theme color. So you can see we're currently using a red theme, but you can personalize this depending on which color you want to choose. You can also select a language from English, French, and German, and I'm sure there'll be more languages added to this in due course. And there are also some general and connection settings you might want to take a look at and toggle on or off depending on your preferences. Now I'm gonna to toggle on the show basket button selection here, and I'll explain why later on. There isn't really much else for us to take a look at until we connect to a location. So let's now go back to the home area and connect to a backup of a rolling folder I have saved on my computer. And it's as simple as that. And we can now browse over more features by going into each individual area of the editor. Now I should say, before we even go into the editor, if you've never done this before and don't really know where to begin, you just need to connect your RC unit to your computer and drag across your Roland folder, which contains all of the relevant information on your unit. You then connect the editor to this folder and make your adjustments and either restore the folder to the device or you can push information over to the RC if you are connected directly. I strongly recommend that you work remotely where possible and don't work directly with the looper as this will be your safer option just in case anything does go wrong. Also, it is essential that you regularly back up your folders. Personally, anytime I make amendments to my RC, I will simply drag my folder across and create a backup and occasionally create a backup of a backup because I've put far too many hours into this thing and definitely don't want to lose any of my info. So now that we're connected, we can see a few other options appear on the home screen. And we now have the notes area at the top 
where we can make any useful notes on this specific folder location. So you can see I've just popped in a couple of sentences regarding this specific folder location after the last time I rehearsed. And this is just a handy little area where you can make any notes. The connection status here tells us exactly where we are connected to. And now we have two additional buttons next to the connection status tab. And they are the green button, which is to create a backup of the connected location. And this is always good to do, as mentioned, perhaps if you make a few changes that you don't like and want to revert back to the original folder settings. And then on the end, we also have a generate folder documentation, which is really handy. And what this does, it gives you a list of all 99 memories and a load of information relating to each memory, such as the selected tempo, the time signature, the kit you have selected as your rhythm if you're using one, a list of all your chosen input and track effects, assigns, and any additional notes that you might have added, which we'll take a look at later on, but a great resource to have nonetheless. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we also have two handy buttons taking us to the RC parameter guide and owner's manual, depending on the device that you're connected to, whether that's the RC600 or the 505 Mark II. So we can connect to each area within the editor by clicking on the buttons on the home page, by clicking on the individual tabs at the bottom of the page, and also by navigating to the three lines in the top left-hand corner and clicking it into each area this way. So let's first go into the memory editor. This gives us access to each individual memory and the option to change settings and parameters within that particular memory. Now this video is just an overview of the editor, but I will be making more in-depth tutorials on the editor in due course. So stay tuned for that. But here we can quickly move memories around. So if I want to reorder my memories, I can do it that way. If I click on the info tab at the top, I can make any additional notes about this particular song. If I go into loop, I can change all of my track settings individually. Going into assigns, I can easily move assigns around. So let's say I want to move assign number four into this position. I can swap those assigns around or overwrite them. I can also look over and amend any input, output, EQ and effect settings should I wish to do that. So there are lots of things we can do within the memory editor area. And if I just go up to the top left hand corner, we can also navigate to memories by going onto this memory location picker. And you can see I have all of my memories down the left and any recent memories that I've connected to on the right. To the right of this, we can easily change the name of the memory. We can save changes to this particular memory or save changes across all memories using these buttons over here. And again, the manual and parameter guide buttons are usefully placed in the top right hand corner. Now moving across to the system editor tab, here you can make changes to the system settings such as inputs, outputs, mixer levels, control functions, etc. Now personally, I make my changes per memory and I save memories as templates and then copy these templates across to new memories as and when I need them. So I don't tend to need access to the system settings this way, but that's just my personal preference. Again, you can make notes to the system settings up here, and you can also find your USB and MIDI settings, as well as the setup where you can change the functionality of the onboard knobs, display mode, etc. You can also make notes at the top and next to the system notes area, you've also got another save button where you can save your system settings. Okay, so moving across to audio manager, here we can listen back to any recorded tracks that we have within the selected memory. So you can see in this particular memory, I have no audio recording. So let me go and navigate to something with some audio. So here you can see I've got something recording on track two, track three, and track six. So we can obviously listen back to each of those tracks individually. We can listen back to them all together. We can also import other audio files. We can export the selected audio files. We can copy and paste between tracks, which is also handy if you wanted to move your tracks around. We can just copy a track and then paste it to a different track. We can also delete our recordings and we can bounce tracks over here. As mentioned, we can play tracks back individually or we can play all at the same time. This button over here allows us to listen back to the tracks on a loop or I can turn this off and then just listen back to that track as it plays once through. But I think it's just handy to leave it on a loop as you would with the unit itself. Over here, you can also turn on the play level selection if you wanted to listen back to your tracks at the chosen play level. Next up, we've got Memory Manager. So this is a fantastic tool and one of the main reasons I actually use the RC editor. Now there are a few things that are just not possible within the device itself, such as copying settings, effects and assigns to multiple locations. But here you can make that happen easily. Simply navigate to the memory that you want to use to copy your settings across. 
toggle on and off your chosen settings, and then just select which memory or memories you want to move those settings to. So for example, if I want to move all my loop settings, assigns 1, 2, 5, and 16, all of my settings for input effects bank A, and all of my settings for track effects bank B, I can now move them from this memory to a different memory. All I need to do is make sure that I've selected the correct memory I want to move these settings from. And then over here where we've got targets, we can update to a different memory location. So let's say memory number 21. I'm going to update targets, hit update, and then all of those settings have now been applied to a different memory location. And in our case, memory number 21. I can also do a bulk update by selecting multiple memory locations. So let's say 21 to 30, and then 50, and then 99. And then now I can update the targets and all of the selected settings, assigned input effects and track effects options I've got toggled on will be applied to all of these selected memories. I also have the option to toggle on all of the settings by selecting toggle select in the top right hand corner. So you can see everything is now turned on. So I can now update the selected targets with all of the settings. And again, I have this handy memory picker and I can quickly navigate to my selected memories this way. You can also narrow down which values you want to move between memories using the basket feature. And at the start of the video, I mentioned turning on show basket buttons in the settings, which gives us an extra basket button next to each option. So if we go back over to the memory editor, we can see these buttons down the right hand side and we can select individual values to add to the basket. Now I used this for the first time a couple of days ago and it was such a useful feature to have. So in my case, I just wanted to move across the record action to record dub and also have my input effects bank B and bank D turned on. So this is how I did it. All of these settings are correct within this current memory location, but I wanted to apply these settings directly to different memories. So I turned on the record play action to record dub and then I clicked on the basket button here which has now added this parameter to the basket. I then went into my input effects. I went to bank B and made sure that my bank B pedal A was also turned on, added this to the basket. And then I did the same with bank D pedal A and added that to the basket. So now if I go back over to the memory manager, you will see I've got those three selections added to the basket. So now I just wanna move these three things to those memory locations. I'm gonna to toggle off all of these settings here and just those three specific parameters will be moved to my selected memory locations. So we then have the set list manager, and this is where we can drag and drop our memories into a set list. So let's just add a few memories into this first set list area here. You can see I've got a location selected, which you'll have to choose before you can create a set list. But here we can add songs and we can move them around as we see fit, put them in any order we want to. If we right click, we can move them around, we can move them up and down this way, and we can also delete selected memories as well. So let's say you're going to play a set with these five songs here and you want to perform them in this order, but don't want to waste any time at the gig navigating to these different memories. You can simply create the set list here, arrange the songs in your chosen order and then copy and paste them over to a certain area on your device. So I'm just going to toggle on all of these songs and let's say I want to paste them from memory number 21. I just drag the first one over here. It asks me if I want to paste these five memory locations starting at memory 21. I hit yes. And now my set list has been created from memory 21 to 25. Another truly amazing feature to have within the editor. And finally, the last tab across here is settings. So we looked in this area earlier on, which is where you can personalize and amend how you want the editor to look and function, as well as keeping a log of the changes that you make along the way. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is a new feature that I've come across, and this is the option to be able to compare memory locations. So if we go back into the memory editor, we can see our list of memories again down the left-hand side. And then if I right-click on one of these memories and scroll down to compare, I've got the option here to add and remove the memories that I want to compare against each other. So we can actually compare settings, effects, assigns, pretty much everything that you saved between your different memories. Now you might want to do this, say, if you're using a specific memory for a song and it sounds great, but perhaps on another memory, there's something that just doesn't sound quite right and you don't want to go rummaging around looking for the culprit. So to use the compare feature, let's select memory number one 
and I'm going to set that as my first memory. So that's the memory that we're going to be comparing against. And then I can add other memories to the list. So let me choose memories two and three. And now I'm going to compare memories two and three against memory number one. If I wanted to change that order and, and compare them against memory number three, I would right click and set memory number three as the first memory. So you can add and remove the memories you want to compare and you can also change which memory you want to compare them against. Now if I hit run, in the bottom left hand corner it's giving me a status and there we go, I now have a spreadsheet containing the comparisons between those memories. So this column here is memory number one and that's the memory that we have compared against and you can see all of these different settings that I have in that memory. And in memories two and three, I can clearly identify what is different compared to the first memory just by looking over the areas highlighted in red. So again, another useful tool to have within the RC editor. So I really cannot stress enough how useful the editor is and how much I recommend you adding it to your arsenal. Yes, there is a cost to download it, but as I've said before, it's worth its weight in gold. I and many others wouldn't go without it, especially now I use it so often. The time consuming tasks that you have to do within the unit itself can be done in a few seconds with the editor. Combine this with the ability to make these settings remotely from your computer and not bent over pushing buttons while squinting at a small display. It's not hard to convince yourself that this is certainly one of the most useful additions to your setup. So if you want to save 10% on the current price of the editor, click the link in the description, enter the coupon code shown on screen and you'll receive a discount on the current price of the editor. So that's it everyone, I hope you found this video useful and if so, subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop. Hit the like button to help the channel reach more people like yourself. You can support the channel with the buy me a coffee, super thanks and various links down below. And as always everybody, I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta!